Hi guys, I'm Alex Woods and I'm part of Phantom Media's University of Derby Student Union election coverage and today I am joined by... Hi everybody, I'm Emily Lane and I am running for the Vice President Welfare position. What drew you to the particular role, Emily? Um, having uh, done the role for a year now, is, there's certain elements of it that I really, really enjoyed doing and I wanted to explore more by doing a second year. Um, it's it's such a good opportunity to do many different things and um, with the difficulty of this year and doing a lot of virtual things, I wanted a chance to do in-person things and really expand on what I did this year and see if I can go bigger and better, basically. <laughs> And if you were to succeed in a re-election, what would be the primary aim? Um, so I've noticed that the feedback loop to the university for EDI especially is quite weak. Um, we've got the EDI council and we've got our part-time officers, but I really wanted to solidify the uh, feedback that we were getting from students. So we have the Facebook groups for students, but I really wanted to engage more students and get the PTOs having a bigger role than what they already do um, and get, getting them talking to students and feeding that back to me so that I can feed back effectively to the university. And what is your perception of the Union of Students right now? Um, I think generally it's a positive one. Um, I have seen negative things to, about it and I understand why, where those feelings are coming from. But I think a lot of students do understand the position that we're in. Um, and I think that it's um, something that we need to rebuild um, and, and be as open and, and, and honest as we can. So we've been doing the weekly updates and things like that to be as open and honest. And I think, um, you know, it's, it's a difficult year and we need to prove that we are still, that we, you know, we're still representing students' ideas, even though there's a whole lot of other things going on this year. Um, and I think the negatives, like I said, I do understand them. Um, and I think that we need to work um, with, the, with people who do have criticisms of us and understand where we went wrong and if we can do anything to rectify those things that they feel we didn't do. Brilliant. Is there anything that you would particularly change? Um, I think the union is, is, is very flexible already. They did a lot to support um, students in, uh, with like the COVID hub um, and, and they, they altered the way that they were working this year to um, facilitate for the students. So I think that it is already quite flexible and already um, very open to, to change already. Um, so I think any change that would be needed, they're open to doing anyway. I don't think, um, I think that in itself is really good. And I don't think that you know, they're, they're willing to change already. So any changes that would be implemented can happen. Um, and I think, you know, they, they, they always try and go from the student's perspective. Um, I, I can't think of anything in particular that I would personally change from them because, because of that flexibility, because of how willing they are to accommodate students and, 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 and give feedback to the university. Now, these next couple of ones are going to be uh, a little bit job interviewee. So I apologize about the nature of them and stuff. They're a little bit of a change from uh, like, what's your great aim? What, what would you do if you succeed? Blah, 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 blah. OK, so how do you solve problems in a professional setting? Um, so things that I've, I do is I, I take a step back. So if, if, a, if something is presented to me, I take a step back and go, right, where is the best place for this to be? go am I the best person to solve this if I am then I will go through it logically and I will look at what can I definitely do what can I maybe do but I can't promise that I can get that done um, and what can I definitely not do so if there's things that I can't do then I will I will I will if it's a if someone a student's come to me then I will say to them look this is something I, I can't do this however and I'll talk to them through the process um, if it's something that the university have kind of presented to me um, that they want to do that I don't think is good for students then I'll, I'll explain to them why maybe students wouldn't accept that um, so I always try and go through what can I do what can I definitely do what can I definitely not do and work from there and kind of see who else I can bring in to work with me um, so if another officer can help me or if um, the advice team who I work really closely with can help me then I'll ask them for um, for support and I'll just kind of go look 
I, I know I, I I know I need help and I'm I'm more than happy to go I can't do this on my own I need you guys to help me so um it's definitely a team approach if I can if I can do it on my own then I'll I'll tackle it on my own again uh, this next one is a little bit different when it applies to to yourself because you've kind of already gone through this but um I, I'm still interested in the answer that um that comes from it um mm -hmm. so when if you are going to be re-elected or when you're elected into into the role of um, VP welfare, um, the first thing that ever happens is poppers go off, champagne flies. But the next thing is, is that your face is plastered everywhere. You have a headshot there and then of your hair, one particular thing, so you can't change it. Otherwise, people will not recognize you. And it's shoved on every social media um, influence, every post that goes out. It's all over the place. It is there. And then obviously you're on every billboard around the university and everyone knows who you are. The publicity is there. And then throughout the year, you graduate into a full body shot with all the rest of your VPs and the president in front of the university. That's not photoshopped. Definitely not. Definitely um, not. <laughs> definitely not photoshopped. It, it was a really good day that day. I know I was there. Uh, <laughs> uh, but obviously it comes with a lot of publicity, the role. How is it that you would deal with that? Yeah, so it is a very strange thing suddenly seeing your face everywhere. Um, and actually, I did change my hair. My hair in my my headshot was longer. And then I think a week or two into the role, I was like, you know what? I fancy a change. Chopped it all off and dyed it purple. So you know, <laughs> I went I went from one extreme to another kind of. Um, so yeah, it is a bit strange, um, but I think it allows that kind of recognition so that when <laughs> fingers crossed when we are back on site if students see us and they need help they can come to us they know who we are they know that they can ask us for help uh but at the same time I guess it kind of adds that oh they're the, they're the officers in a way but I always try to kind of have a no no come come ask me questions I want you to ask me questions um and so yeah I I you get used to it the you know the more Thursday thoughts that we did and the Instagram stories and all that kind of thing it kind of you would do, we were doing so much of it that it just became, kind of became second nature um this late in the year um so for me it was never um it's it's never really changed how I kind of approached the role it's always been um yes my face is everywhere but you can still come and talk to me you can still ask me questions if you have a problem with me or you know with, with the union come and tell me I, I want to hear it because how can I change it if you don't so um I think it allows people to put a face to the role as well and and give us a bit more humanity uh, rather than just some distant person uh, especially in this this you know with what everything that's going on having our faces out there is important so students know that we are still people we are still working um in the background um and might not be as visible as as previous officers might have been student experience has, uh, has changed and a lot of students have been very critical of the university's response to the coronavirus um what do you think the Union of Students should do in response to not only students' concerns about their student experience, but their criticism of the university? Um, well, I think it's, it's been a tricky situation because we've done, a, as a union, we have been actively trying to reach out to students. We've been, you know, trying to put on things so, and, and try and be as, have it as normal as possible. And it's been hard. And that you know students are fatigued from screen time from their lectures they are getting bombarded with information all the time and it's tricky to kind of find that balance and um i think the university's approach to it is is they've they've been They've got to make sure that they are keeping everybody safe and that's not just students at the end of the day there are members of staff not just lecturers but there are cleaners there are um, people um, in hr uh, there are estate members there are halls members of staff so there's so many people that the university has to think about and yes it sucks it really sucks and, and nobody's happy with the situation and i think it's just making the best out of, uh, out of a terrible, um, terrible situation. And so I think the university needs to listen to students and really needs to hear that how it's affecting their mental health and how it's affecting um, their well-being. Because at the end of the day, um, being 
you know you go to university not just to get a degree but for the social experience and all that kind of thing and as much as we can do to try and provide that the university also needs to do something to provide something for students um and so it's I've been in a lot of conversations talking about men, men, staff's mental health and things like that and what they're going through. Um, and it's um, sometimes I've had to kind of go, uh, yeah, but also students' mental health. That's also, you know, they kind of look at well-being to deal with that sometimes and go, well-being and looking after students' mental health. But well-being can get over over encumbered by how many students are needing their support. So it's just I think the, the university needs to consider um, you know what it is that they are putting out for students and what they are um that they got to remember that is that there's lots of people involved in, in in a university um as much as it is for the students there are lots of people working there and lots of people you know they've got family they've got maybe vulnerable family members so it's a really tough situation a tough balancing act to try and get right um and you know like sometimes they'll also go union you kind of look after the students and we've done what we can um to to do that you know with the covid hub with uh, the loot boxes that we've sent out uh, i've been doing a mental health thing on a friday where students can just drop in have a chat just see another face um and so it's just just trying to provide as much as possible but also being aware that screen fatigue is a big thing um and not putting too much out there that students um don't want or you know aren't able to come to or yeah it's, it's a trick it's, it's a tricky situation so as as you kind of already did you already answered the the last question in in your answer there um which the next one was obviously going to be what would your you be able to do in this role that you would be elected to to support what you've just said there but um what you said there with the thursday thursday banks the the covid19 hotline support um the friday mental health issue they're all amazing things and obviously that screams vp welfare <laughs> yeah um i think also when you know as we as we're going forward we can um because i am i did actually set up a new a liberation campaign month so next month which is march is mental health awareness month um which when this goes out should be that this month shouldn't it or it'll have already gone so people might be aware of it people might not um so yeah it's been it's been a big thing for us and i think going forward um listening to students and hearing what they want um and seeing them in person i think is also going to be a big help once we are back on campus um whenever that is uh doing some in-person things and, and really kind of saying no we are still here we are so you can still talk to us um i think we'll also have a big boost for people i i, I can completely agree and I, I i think it would be really fantastic but obviously from this year as you've said um it has been minimal contact in, uh, there we, we us at phantom media uh, and for these election periods we're dubbing it the virtual year um so obviously which it is it's uh, it's been entirely that so there are lessons that we can take from this virtual year um, and we can move them into the next one for you personally and professionally. Are there any that you can take into next year? Yeah, so um, something that I've been working on a lot this year is um, communication with other unions. So um, my LGBTQ plus history month, I collaborated with other unions. So I had other unions attending some webinars that I was putting on um, and we were able to talk about many issues within the LGBTQ plus community. And actually we took away a lot from each other. And I think that was one of the strengths of this year is we were able to connect with other unions, with other universities much easier than we would have done previously. Previously it would have been you had to travel and they wouldn't have even thought of doing it virtually. But this year, because we've been forced to, it's been like well why not you guys come along why don't you guys come along to what we're doing and so I ran the webinars and it was really really good it was really nice to speak to other unions and see what they were doing what issues they were facing and so I could then think about okay well if this came up at Derby what would we do and it really kind of opened my eyes a little bit it really um, showed me that you know it's not just 
you know, there are there are localized issues in, in different areas for sure, but there are also national issues that everybody kind of experiences. Um, and it was really, really interesting. And it, so for me, I think connecting um, with other students, other unions is a vastly is a very vitally important thing. We can't just be in this bubble of this university because every university has different issues. And so um, I would love to do that again. And it would it could be virtual, it could be in person, but the easier one is, is virtual. And, and so that connection um, is, is there now. And we are able, everybody's learned how to use Zoom or Teams or whatever it is that they used um, and but then also you do the in-person thing as well and I think that's what's been missing this year is the in-person things um, but having those virtual opportunities has been massive and I think that's something that we need to take forward is is still having those connections where possible. Brilliant thank you Emily.